Hello and Namaskar. Welcome to another session of BW Farhana Tidbits, where I share some of my knowledge and experience. My name is Devansh Mukherjee, and today we are going to see SAP ABAP CDS views using the Change Data Capture CDC based Delta. We'll cover how the CDC annotations work, what are the behind the scenes mechanism of CDC, and how BW extracts data using CDC enabled ABAP CDS views. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's get right into the meat of the content and we'll see how the CDC, which is Change Data Capture, works with ABAP CDS views. All right, so let's reiterate the purpose. So as part of this particular session, we'll see how the SAP CDS views and these are ABAP CDS views. So I should probably say SAP ABAP CDS views work with the change data capture logic for a valid business scenario. So what is the business scenario? We have a custom extractor in client and this custom extractor exists in ECC side. Uh, which later got migrated to S4 side. So let's say in S4 now, after the migration, we still have the custom extractor, which is ZBW underscore EKAB. This is based on a table. It's a full load and the table name is EKAB, which actually stores the purchase order and released documentation. So just to give you a little bit background, when you create a contract, there is something called a master contract. It's a parent or umbrella document you create with your vendors. And under that master contract, you create multiple purchase orders. And all of them are part of that master contract. It is also called an outline agreement or some people abbreviate it as OA. Outline agreement is nothing but the master contract. So whenever you create a purchase order as part of the master contract and release that to vendors saying that, OK, I am now, you know, uh, good with this particular particular purchase order and I'm going to release this to you guys and then you can start sending us the goods. That means the vendor gets the confirmation that, yes, these purchase orders are finally released to us. So that release documentation details are stored in EKAP. And since there is no a uh, standard extractor based on EKAB. So the customer created a custom extractor and the logic for that it's based directly on the table EKAB, no function module or any other logic. It's directly based on the EKAB table and it's a full load, no data enabled. Logic direct read from EKAB without any info package selections. And what is the business ask? The business ask is that now from the methodology of direct read from the EKAB, they want to move to the world of ABAP CDS views and they want to use the new functionality of CDC, change data capture. This change data capture is based on the triggers, database triggers. So I'll just add the mention here based on DB triggers. Okay. So now this is the business scenario and we are going to achieve this with the help of an ABAP CDS view based on CDC based Delta functionality. And we'll do the testing also. I'm going to show you the screenshots from the actual system and you will see how it actually works. Okay. So before we delve into the CDS view coding, the annotations and all the other concomitant details, let's first uh, visit or revisit or, or let's first refresh ourselves with the minimum required version for this CDC to work because this is a prerequisite, then infrastructure prerequisite. So we have to make sure that our system support this CDC. Uh, so basically we have minimum version requirements for source side and minimum version requirements for BW side. In our case, the source is S4 HANA and the target is BW. So minimum version for the target side is if you are on the cloud, S4 HANA cloud, minimum version is 1905. If you are on S4 HANA on-prem, the minimum version is 1909, the feature pack 01, FPS 01. So that's the minimum version for the on-prem. And you should have the SAP underscore basis component 
as 7.54 at least or higher. From the target side, uh, the minimum version for BW is BW on HANA 7.5 SP4 or higher. And if you are on BW for HANA, then it should be at least 1.0 SP01 or higher. And again, same thing applies here as well. SAP underscore basis component should be 7.54 or higher. Okay, so now let's go into the details of the CDS view. So the annotation which is responsible for CDC enablement or activation of CDC for a CDS view is delta dot change data capture. This is the annotation. When you put this annotation in an ABAP CDS view, then basically it enables your CDC provided you have all the minimum infrastructure requirements met. Now, just a quick uh, note on annotations. What is an annotation? So if you are new to ABAP CDS views, these annotations, they provide the properties of a CDS view. So you can say that whether this CDS view extracts uh, data or not, meaning it is enabled for BW extraction or not. You can also um, say that, okay, I will activate a property called Delta. So that's this CDS view will support Delta extraction as well. All those properties which provide additional capabilities to a CDS view are called annotations. And all the extraction related annotations will fall under at the rate analytics header or at the rate analytics category, I should say. So anything which starts with at the rate at the beginning, usually at the beginning of the CDS view coding are called annotations. And those annotations are nothing but properties you are providing or activating for a CDS view like O data. If you want to expose your CDS view for O data, then there are certain properties which you have to provide here. And those properties are called annotations, O data annotations. Similarly, if you want to have exposed this for embedded analytics, then you have to enable this as a query. So then there are annotations for query. Similarly, for video extraction, all the annotations will fall under at the rate analytics. So here, as you can see, data category is fact. That means this is a uh, factual uh, CDS view. That means it will have your master data and transaction data combined. Data extraction is enabled. Enabled is true. That means data extraction can happen using the CDS view. And the delta is enabled as well using the change data capture. And in this delta dot change data capture, under that you can provide mapping. And under the mapping annotation, you provide which table you want to activate the CDC on. What is the role of that table? Since we have only one table here, it is just main. But if you have multiple tables, then you can provide the name of the uh, other tables under the main and then provide whether it's a left or to join um, or not. And then uh, you can provide multiple tables as well. Here, I just had a requirement of one table, as you know, EKAB. So I just mentioned one table here, role is main. The view element, meaning that what is the name of the key fields of this table in the CDS view. So the name is corner, KTPNR, EBLN, EBLP. That means the main contract number, contract item, purchase order number, purchase order item. And then what is the actual name of those fields in the table? So they are the same. In many cases, they might not be the same, meaning if you have renamed these fields in your CDS view, then those renamed field names will come on the top and then the actual table field names will come in the table element. So this is the total uh, annotation uh, you have to give. Yeah, this is the list of the, all the annotations you have to provide for the CDC to be enabled. Now, how does the CDC work? So the change data capture is basically a delta mechanism. And that means that if a change happens in your table, source table, in our case EKAB, immediately the CDC mechanism will identify that and it will push that to your operational delta queues, OD queues. Okay, so that's the overall summary of how CDC works. As soon as the change happens in the source table or tables, then the CDC will immediately identify that and it will uh, trigger some jobs internally, which we will see in a bit 
and then finally the data is pushed into the operation data queues. So how does that entire thing work? There are two main jobs which happens. By the way, I also have to mention that they use database triggers. The CDC change data capture mechanism uses database triggers. Now, people who are not aware of what is a database trigger, let me just give you a quick one liner. So database triggers are basically a, um, basically an agent. You are activating an agent or a set of agents on a particular table or a list of tables. Meaning if you say, okay, activate database triggers, that means there will be three agents which will be activated. Agent number one will monitor if there are any inserts in the table. Agent number two will monitor if there are any updates to an existing record in the table. And agent number three will monitor if there are any deletes which are happening on the table. So basically insert trigger, update trigger, delete triggers. These are the three types of agents which are activated, which will continuously monitor that table and as soon as there is a change in the table, they will immediately send it to operational data queues, ODQs. So that is what is called a database triggers. So there are two main jobs in the source side, in the S4 side. Observer job, the name is slash one dh slash observe underscore log tab and transfer job, which is slash one dh slash push underscore CDS underscore delta. These are the two main jobs associated with CDC. And the second job is basically started by the first job. So observe log tab, which is an observer job, is responsible to start the transfer job as soon as there is a change in the source table. So first prerequisite is that we have to make sure that in the T code DH CDC mon, these two jobs are green status. That is very, very important. If any one of them is red, the CDC is not going to work. Similar to the, you know, um, familiar T code ODQ mon, which is used to monitor uh, and maintain the operational data queues, ODQs. Similarly, for CDC, SAP has given this new T code, which is called DH CDC mon. As you can see, the job names are also starting with slash one DH. So that is the naming convention. So DH CDC mon is the new T code where you can monitor your CDC. So both these jobs should be green in DH CDC mon T code. Otherwise, the CDC won't work. And I'm going to show you the screenshot of the system and this T code. So don't worry, you will see how it actually looks like in the system. But before we do that, let's actually uh, understand um, with the diagram step by step, uh, you know, flow graph, I would say, for the workings of the CDC. This is very, very important. If you understand this, then you can troubleshoot any issues in the CDC. So in our example, we have the table EKAB, which is our main table. And then step number one, you will start an initialization or a Delta info package or DTP from BW side. So before that, of course, you have to make sure that your CDS view is ready, which I'm going to show you how the coding looks like in the CDS view. So your CDS view is ready. You have created the data source in BW side. You have created the transformation. Uh, to the first level ADSO and then you have also created the info package or DTP uh, which connects to the CDS view. So this entire flow is ready. That's what the assumption is. And now we start with step number one. So step number one is you start or execute your Delta or initialization info package or DTP. Okay. This is the first time you are doing this. That means if you trigger the Delta first time, it's going to do the Delta or uh, initialization with data transfer. Or if you have a dedicated info package for initialization, then you start that as well. In DTP, you don't need to have a dedicated DTP for initialization. You just have one Delta DTP. And as soon as you start that, it will do the initialization and it will also set the Delta pointers. So any one of them. Step number one, when you do that, the triggers are created on the table. So in my case, when I start the init info package or Delta DTP for the first time in BW, then it will go in the source and it will create the triggers. Three types of triggers, as I already mentioned, insert, update and delete. Plus, in addition to those triggers, 
there are two logging tables created master logging table and subscriber logging table master logging table naming convention will be slash 1dh slash ml and followed by a number and the subscriber logging table naming convention is slash 1dh slash sl for subscriber logging ml is for master logging and then followed by a number and once you have already also made sure that in dhcdc mon both the jobs are green so as soon as this master logging table and subscriber logging table are created the observer job is constantly monitoring the master logging table okay so and a transfer job is basically started by the observer job okay so let's again go step by step so step number one we trigger the initialization or the delta dtp which creates the triggers and it also creates the master logging table and subscriber logging table so three things gets created the triggers the master logging table and the subscriber logging table then step number two any change in the table so assuming that your init or delta was successful and all the data got transferred and then these master logging table subscriber logging tables are created observer job is constantly monitoring this and the any change it will start the transfer job so step number two the functional team does a, a change in that uh, ekb okay a change triggers a uh, an update or modification in ekb now that can be anything that can be an insert that can be an update that can be a delete usually deletes don't happen on ekb usually it's going to be inserts and updates but if even if a deletes happen in exceptional cases our cdc or database triggers are capable to handle that so any change in the table the triggers will copy the data into master logging table so if there is any change then these triggers are responsible to take the data take take that new data or the uh, modified data and copy that into the master logging table so there will be a new record which will come in the master logging table now as soon as there is a change or there is a new entry in the master logging table observer job immediately identifies that and then it starts the transfer job okay that's all it does so the overall responsibility of the observer job is to monitor the master logging table and as soon as there is an entry it just starts the transfer job that means the observer job is scheduled but transfer job is not scheduled it is triggered ad hoc by observer job based on a change in the master logging table or any new entry in the master logging table step number 3 so the transfer job is started by the observer job and the transfer job's responsibility is to copy the data from master logging table to subscriber logging table and also start a process which is called a view reconstruction okay so this is what is this next step okay so let's go uh, step number 3 again so transfer job is started by the observer job it copies the data from master logging table to the subscriber logging table this job might already condense changes that means if there are uh, three records in the master logging table and the key fields are same for all the three records then those three records will be condensed into one single record in the subscriber logging table okay and after the data is copied from master logging table to subscriber logging table there is another process which i mentioned which is also started by the transfer job which is called the cds view reconstruction so step number 4 latest data from cds view for the key fields of the cds view or the key fields of the table for which you have enabled the cdc um will basically be executed it will be found in the subscriber logging table right because the data is copied and then for that key field cds view will be executed and the data is written to the operational delta queues okay so not to make it too complicated just understand in simple words as soon as there is a change in ekb okay the triggers will identify that and copy the data from ekb to master logging table and then observer job is constantly monitoring this so it identifies that there is a new record in master logging table it starts the transfer job transfer job takes the data from master logging table copies it to subscriber logging table and also starts cds view reconstruction which is nothing but copying the data to the operational delta queues okay 
so don't be um, stuck into too much of uh, weeds in terms of the details of cdsu reconstruction just understand that cdsu reconstruction is nothing but copying the data from the subscriber logging table to the operational delta queues why this is uh, called cdsu reconstruction because in master logging table and subscriber logging table only key fields are stored so if your cds view has 50 fields for example and only three of them are key fields you have defined okay then only those three fields will be stored here not the entire record with 50 fields so based on the key field values the entire record is created with 50 fields for the cds view reconstruction step and then that is basically copied into operational delta queues because uh, when you copy the data in OD queues, you don't need only the key fields. You need the entire 50 fields, right? So that's why it's called CDS reconstruction. The entire record is reconstructed and copied into operational delta queues. Okay. The name is CDS view dollar F. Why I mentioned dollar F because it's a fact CDS view. Uh, and the name of the queue, which will be visible in the operational data queues, ODQ Monty code, will be the name of the CDS view followed with a dollar F. And then the process ends there. Then it's a responsibility of a BW info package or DTP to get the data from operational data queues. That means data will not be pushed automatically from operational data queues to BW. That is a pull mechanism. The push mechanism ends at ODQ. That means if the change is there in EKAB, the triggers will copy into the ML master logging table. The uh, observer job will start the transfer job. Transfer job will uh, copy that from the master logging table to subscriber logging table. And then it also gets pushed to ODQ. And that's all. Then whenever the BW info package or DTP will start, it can be once a day, twice a day, every hour, every six hours, etc. Uh, and at that time, the data will be copied from the operational data queues to your BW. Now, if you want to take it one step further, you can also do a streaming process chain in BW. That will basically constantly monitor the operational data queue. So as soon as there is a data pushed by the CDC to ODQ, then the streaming process chain gets triggered and the BW will get the data. So that is one step further if you want to make it absolutely near real time without manual intervention. Okay, But that is out of scope. The streaming process is out of scope for this particular session. So this is the entire process flow or the workflow or the flow chart, whatever you want to call it for the CDC. Okay. So that's what I mentioned here, initialization and trigger creation. Whenever the info package DTP triggers, the uh, triggers are created on the table, source table and the logging table are also created. The observer job uh, is scheduled after the first subscription to a CDS view. That means whenever you are basically uh, triggering the first info package or, or, or the Delta DTP, right? Then the subscription is created in ODQ mon and the triggers are created, the logging tables are created and the observer job is now monitoring your logging table. Which logging table it's monitoring? The master logging table. Okay. So this can be seen in uh, T code DHCDC mon. If you go to DHCDC mon, you can see that the observer job and transfer jobs are green. That's what it should be. And you can also see the name of the master logging table, the name of the uh, subscriber logging table and also the delta pointer. So everything you will be able to see in DHCDC mon. I have given the screenshot of DHCDC mon below. So, um, you know, it will be uh, shown to you in a bit. Now, if a record is changed, then the following takes place. As we mentioned, uh, data is written to master logging table, right? Uh, by whom? By the triggers. So as you can see, again, going back to the diagram, the triggers will copy into master logging table. And from there on, the observer job will 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 identify that, starts the transfer job and transfer job copies all the way up to ODQ mon, which is operation data queues. Now I want to show you the structure of the master logging table as well. As you can see, the master logging table which got created in EK for EKAB, the structure is this. 
So the key field is the sequence number and then you will see only those four or five key fields are there, not the entire list of CDS view fields. So we have the client MANDT, we have the main contract number, the contract line item, the purchase order number and the purchase order line item. So these are the key fields of the CDS view and also for the table EKAB. So only those key fields will be part of the logging table, master logging table. And of course, there is a timestamp and a sequence for internal tracking. So uh, my main point here is it's not going to store the entire record. It only stores the key field values. And once there is data in the master login table, the transfer job copies it from the master login table to subscriber login table. That means the observer job, which is your slash one DH slash observe underscore log tab, which monitors the master login table is constantly monitoring the master login table and how you can confirm that go to SM37 and give the job name slash one DH slash observe log tab. You will see that it is always there in active status. That means it's constantly monitoring it. Plus it also finishes every hour. So it is scheduled every hour. Plus it monitors, it continuously monitors the master logging table. That's why you will also see something called active status. So we know that, you know, once the data comes in the master logging table, it starts, uh, the observer job starts the transfer job. The transfer job copies the records from master logging table to subscriber logging table, and it condenses the records based on the key fields, of course. This is the structure of the subscriber logging table. So you see, there is no sequence and timestamp. In master logging table, there is sequence and timestamp. And in subscriber logging table, there is no sequence and timestamp. That's why the record gets condensed or aggregated, you know, combined. So we have those four or five key fields, which are the key fields for the EKAB table. And also we have defined the same key fields uh, in the CDS view as well. So that is the structure of the subscriber logging. And then, of course, you know, once the data is copied into the subscriber logging table, the CDS view reconstruction happens and the data gets copied into operational delta queues. That's what I mentioned here. After the transfer job copies the logging table entries, the view reconstruction is executed and this selects the latest after images from the CDS view for the corresponding key field, which is there in the subscriber logging table and then copies the data into OD queues. And then from there on, BW extraction reads the data from ODQ. Again, this is not automated. This is a based on time. So uh, in process chain, if you have once a day, then it will go and uh, read the data from ODQ and bring the data into BW target, right, which is your ADSOs, uh, first level, second level, etc. Okay. If there are two records with the same key, then they still have the same order in ODQ. So in ODQ, uh, the sequence in which the data is populated, that sequence is respected and you don't need to worry about that. Once the data comes into the uh, ADSOs, that sequence will be maintained and the ADSO will get the correct update. So it will match with your source. Uh, I've given a um, link uh, of the SAP help portal here. So you can see that there is a, a CDC example Two examples are given automatic and mapping, right? I have shown the mapping here. So if you see the annotation, it is mapping annotation under the CDC. But there is also something called automatic. Automatic is used when you don't want to mention the key fields and you want SAP to automatically identify the key fields. This works if it's just one table, simple one table, then SAP um, is uh, the logic of um, CDC is good enough or smart enough to identify what are the key fields of the table. But if there are more than one table, then you should always go for mapping and specifically and explicitly mention the key fields, both what you have renamed them in the CDS view and what is the actual name of the field in the table. And you have to mention all those tables if you are joining three or four tables all the names of the three or four tables must be mentioned here okay and first one will have the main role that means that's your starting table and then left outer join to second table left outer join to third table all those annotations can be given 
but here in our example it was just one simple table so i could have used automatic okay but i have not used automatic because i wanted to test this mapping if this actually works or not you can put mapping for one table also and uh, although it is recommended to have if you have multiple tables but there is nothing stopping you from using the mapping annotation even if you have one table that's what i wanted to test in this way i could have uh, i was able to test both the mapping annotation and also the cdc okay but if it's a simple one table you don't need mapping annotation you can just say automatic that's all and you don't have to mention all these right okay so going back to um the testing part so this was the theory part which is important for us to understand and now we will go in the actual implementation and i'll show you the screenshots from the actual implementation so we had a system uh it was a sandbox system that's why you will have the x here so we did the testing in the sandbox system so as you can see here we have the cds view this is the entire coding of the cds view okay this these are some um comments okay this is basically the change log who made the change on which date and uh some details about the change so this cds view replaced the custom extractor zbw ekb which was our main business scenario okay is it delta enabled yes it delta enabled using cdc standard tables user ekb standard cds views inside this none because i'm just using a direct table so that's what we have mentioned and this is one of the best practices whenever you are creating a cds you always maintain a change log so that it's uh, easy to understand and read then i told you these are annotations all the at the rate starting uh, sentences or the statements are called annotations for a cds view so these are all the usual annotations object model annotation is important from a performance standpoint so if you want your cds views to perform well and you want them optimized then always put object model annotations and then finally we have the analytics annotations which are related to extraction uh, or embedded analytics so we have the data category fact data extraction enabled is there it's true and then delta by change data capture cdc mapping table is ekb role is this is the main table what are the name of the key fields uh from the cds view so i am since i have not changed the names i have kept the same name and what are the name of the fields from the actual table ekb and this is the same four fields contract number contract item uh purchase order number purchase order item. and this is the coding of the cds view it's a very simple cds view zbw cds zbw ekb cdc that is the naming convention we are following here and then we have the select from ekb all the fields from ekb no special logic or nothing like that just a simple um, selection of all the fields with these first four marked as key fields so we did all that okay and now we did the testing so before we do any change in the source side that's what uh, we tested we tested the deletion scenario specifically but before we did that i took an example example purchasing contract the main contract which is also called the outline agreement as i mentioned before this was our main outline agreement number and this was the associated purchase order number with that main agreement number so 46000636 is the main contract number and 4504295425 is the associated purchase order number both can be seen in ekb as you can see this is the main contract uh, it has a uh, line item number 3 only one line item but it has uh, two purchase order line item so purchase order is same 5425 but it has two line items and deletion indicator which is lokz is blank that means they are not deleted they are both valid line item numbers so this is a released purchase order with two line items that's why it's there in the ekb so this is my example data same data you can see in the cds view so if you do a data preview on the cds view it will show you the same thing this is a contract number i contract item purchase order number purchase order item 1 and 2 and lokz is blank that means they they are not deleted in bw side when i checked the active table of the adso i found that this 
is also there in VW. That means the data is already extracted in VW for this. We have the main contract number, document number for the purchase order, item numbers. Record mode is N means these are new records. Uh, and then LOEKZ is basically blank. So this is the active table of the first layer, DSO or ADSO. Now, in BW, we first do step number one. What was the step number one if you go back? Step number one is do the initialization. Okay, so that's what I did. I have the info package here, but in many cases you will have uh, DTPs, but here we had info packages. So I did the initialize info package, initialize without data transfer, but you can also do with data transfer. But in our case, since the data was already there, the historical data was already there, I did the init without data transfer. So when you do that, you can see that zero records got transferred and initialize the entire process update mode. This is a simulation. So this is just a uh, standard uh, verbiage from SAP, but actually the initialization without data transfer happened. Actually, this is not a simulation. This is actually an actual initialization. So this is the info package I triggered from BW side. Once I do, I did that, I can see that the entry is created in ODQ mon. The subscription is created in ODQ mon. So there you can see dollar F. This is the name of the, C, of the SQL view from the CDS view and then followed by the dollar F. By the way, this is not the name of the CDS view. It is the name of the SQL view which gets generated and then followed by the dollar F. And this is the subscription which is created. You can see that if you go inside the subscription, you can see this is Delta initialization and there's a background job also which gets created. You can check the background job in SM37 if you want to. But I just wanted to show you here that you can see that this is a Delta initialization. Okay. Also, we know that with the theory that once the subscription, once the first time we trigger the info package or Delta DTP, the subscription gets created, but also the triggers and master and subscriber logging tables are also created. So this is the DHCDC MON screenshot, the T code. And as I said before, as I told you before that both the jobs, observer job and transfer job should be in green. Okay, so we made sure they are in green. If they are not green, then what will you do? You will just click on this dispatcher job button. And the moment you click on the dispatcher job button, it starts the observer job and schedules the observer job. So after you click on this dispatcher job, after a few seconds, you should refresh this screen and you will see that observer job and transfer job will be green. Okay. So we can see here that triggers got created on EKAB. Trigger is X. That means yes, trigger got created. Did master login table get created? Yes, it did. And what is the name? This is the name. Did subscriber login table get created? Yes, it got created. And this is the name. And below you can see that the pointer is set to zero right now because this is just initialization without data transfer. So pointer is set to zero. And this is the name of my object, which is my basically the CDS view. Okay. So basically everything happened. With that one info package or Delta DTP for the first time when we trigger it, what happened? The subscription got created in ODQ mon, the triggers got created on the table EKAB, and also the master and subscriber login table got created. Now we are ready for making a change. So what I did was I went to the contract and I checked that this is the PO, which we already know from the data. I went into ME22N T code, which is for the purchase order. And in that purchase order, I deleted item number two. As we know from the data that that purchase order 425 has two line items, both were valid. Now I am deleting the second line item here. Okay. So once I delete and save, then you can see that bin icon just beside the line item number, which signifies that this item is deleted. Once you do that, then if you go into EKAB and refresh, you will see that LOEKZ will be populated for line item number two. That means this item is deleted. As soon as that happens, everything will get um, processed. That means from the theory, what we know, as soon as there is a change in the table, 
the triggers will copy the data into muscle logging table and since the observer job is constantly monitoring the muscle logging table it will immediately identify the change and then it will start the transfer job transfer job will take the data from the muscle logging table copy it into the subscriber logging table and then also start the cdsu reconstruction which finally copies the data into odq okay everything happens all these sequence of events they happen within seconds okay so behind the scene that has all happened and if you go into cds view now also the cds view will show you that loekz is populated as l and as soon as there is a change in ekv table as i told you triggers send that entry into muscle logging table and then transfer job takes that entry and basically copies it so you can see that this transfer job was started by the observer job okay so it started uh, job is created with my name but this actually got started by the observer job why it's showing my id because i scheduled the observer job that's why so observer job is responsible to start this transfer job transfer job is never scheduled okay you will always see the subscriber uh, uh, sorry the observer job scheduled which is an active status all the time and then every hour it finishes but the transfer job is started on an ad hoc basis based on a change happening in the source the transfer job copies the data from master logging table to subscriber logging table as we know now after that the data was moved from subscriber logging table into operation data queues using the view reconstruction so now if you go to that table called odq data which is a delta table for operation data queues you will see that one record came in and this all happened within seconds and now if you go back to the master logging table and subscriber logging table and you want to check the data there you will see zero records this is very important to understand why you will see zero records there because as soon as the data is transferred from master to subscriber from subscriber to odq it is deleted from the master and subscriber logging tables the data do not get retained okay the data is as soon as that transfer happens to odq then it is emptied out and now in dhcdc mod you can see that because of that delta the pointer changed from 0 to 1 that means the pointer moved one step ahead odq mod will still show you zero requests although the data is sitting in odq data table as we saw right odq data has the entry but in odq mon you will not see requests from 0 to 1 why because that signifies bw request status so now if you trigger the info package the delta info package not the initialization initialization info package is done if you trigger the delta info package or dtp in case if you have direct dtp then delta dtp if you trigger for the second time uh, then you will see one record or got extracted in the psa you can see that i got the item number 2 for the purchase order with deletion indicator l and my odq change mode is u odq entity counter is 1 which signifies after image as we know that cds views will never send you before and after images cds view based extractors will only give us after images and that's why these two delta fields odq change mode and odq entity counter is u1 which is after image so we got data successfully in psa now after the bw extracted the data now you will see that odq mon will reflect that one successful request happened for the delta and if you go inside that you can see that here also you can see the same two fields u1 which is the after image and loekz is l all good here so now we know that how cdc uh, quickly identified the change in the table and it started the um, the triggers copied the data the observer job identified it started the transfer job transfer job copied it all the way to odq and then bw info package or dtp got the data from odq now i also try to delete the entire contract line item previously what we did we deleted the 
purchase order line item. Now I went to the parent contract document and tried to delete the third line item of the contract. And it said, yes, successfully changed. That means the deletion happened. And now if you go back to uh, the contract and you can see that there is a bin icon here. Uh, pre which previously was not there. If you see, bin was only there for item number one and two of the main contract, not for item number three. Okay, so I deleted item number three. And by the way, what is the T code for checking the main contract? ME32K. For the purchase order, it is ME22N. For the main contract, it is ME32K. So I deleted the main contract and item number three that had no change on the EKAB table. Okay. EKAB table only tracks and, and identifies the purchase order level details, not the contract level details. Okay, contract level uh, deletions will not be captured in EKAB. So we didn't have any change or any impact of this activity on EKAB. That's why when you will trigger the info package, it will bring zero records because from a table point of view, there was no change. That means the CDC did not identify any change. Okay. We confirmed with the functional team that, you know, deletion of main contract will have no effect on EKAB. So our assumption was corroborated by the functional team. We also confirmed with them that LOEKZ in EKAB relates to the purchase order line item deletion, not the main contract item deletion. That's why there was no impact on the EKAB when we deleted the line item of the main contract. Okay. The values of LOEKZ in EKAB can be L or S. L means the item is deleted. S means the item is blocked. That's what it signifies. PO, which is purchase order or contract, cannot be deleted at header level. That means you cannot have physical deletion from EKAB table. But even if we have physical deletions, you know, in exceptional cases or in very, very rare cases, then still the CDC will identify that and it will send the deletion all the way to the ODQ. And from there, PW info package or ETP will get it. Now, let's discuss some uh, exception scenarios or some, you know, uh, production support scenarios. So sometimes, you know, you will you, you might come across a situation where if you go to DHCDC Monty code, you will see that observer job is red. In such cases, you might ask yourself, will I miss the changes in the table? And the answer to that is no. You will not miss the changes as long as the subscription is active okay um for that particular extractor and the master login table subscriber login table is um, created and can be seen in dhcdc mon your changes will not be missed even if the observer job is read the changes will not be missed okay so that's what I did just to confirm that, uh, you know, when the observer job was read, I made a change um, in the purchase order line item, which triggered a change and that change uh, came into the master login table and sat there and it did not move from there. Why it did not move? Because observer job was read. That means there was no job which was constantly monitoring my master login table. That's why the record was just sitting in the master login table and which uh, identity uh, transferred the uh, record from my main table into master login table the triggers the triggers will be responsible for copying your data from the main table into the master login table that's why you will not miss any records so as long as your triggers are there you will not miss any record and because the observer job was not monitoring this the data did not move from here then what I did was I uh, pushed this button dispatcher job, which started the observer job. As you can see, slash one dh observe log tab is now active. And as soon as it became active, it identified that, oh, there is one record sitting in the master login table. So it immediately started the transfer job, one dh push cds delta, and that transfer job copied the data from master login table to, uh, to subscriber login table and eventually to ODQ data. Now, after that, when I went into the master login table, there were zero records. And as expected, ODQ data got that one record which was sitting in the master login table. 
So even if the jobs are in red, don't worry. Uh, you will not miss any data records as long as you make sure that the subscription, the triggers uh, are active. Okay. Um, some more important maintenance support information I would like to give you uh, for maintenance support activities. Inside the DHCDC MON, there is something called expert functions. Okay. In DHCDC MON, uh, you will find uh, a tab called uh, expert functions. Let me see if I have shown in any of the screenshots above for the DHCD Simon. Yes, in this screenshot, if you see here, this is the button which is called expert functions. So if you click on the expert functions, then you will see that you have an option to clean up. You have an option to delete the recording objects. You have the option to uh, check the objects, unsubscribe objects so on and so forth. And there is a simulation button as well. If you just want to simulate just to make sure everything is working before you actually do it, then you can simulate as well. And I've given the details of what exactly each one of these functions do. So what does the cleanup does? What unsubscribe objects will do? What will the check objects do, etc. So you can take a look here. This is used for maintenance and support activities. Again, good to know, uh, you should know that all CDC related tables will start with DHCDC. So if you want to check the backend tables of the CDC, then all of them will start with DHCDC and then these are all the tables. Some helpful SAP notes are also there. If you face any issues in the CDC, then SAP has consolidated all the known issues in this particular note 2930269. Also, there is some information notes 2991278 related to the delta data from CDSU is using CDC annotation. So you should go through these two notes, which will give you further insights into CDC. Um, some more salient points before I stop for the session. What if I want initialization with filters? So many pe people, they might ask that, okay, here you have no selections, but what if in my client scenario, I have to initialize with filters. Does CDC support that? Then the answer to that is yes, it does. In the CDC annotation, in addition to the table role, view element, and table element, you can also you can also mention filters. There's another annotation filters where you can mention that what is the operator, whether it's between, greater than, less than, equal to, etc. What is the element or what is the field name for which you want to put the filter? and what is the value of that filter. It also supports multiple filters. So it's not that you can only put one filter, you can have multiple filters as well. So this way you can have CDC with filters. That means that only if the company code W2 is changed, the CDC will trigger the change. If there is a change for any other company code, Booker is company code by the way, then CDC will not identify that as a change and we won't send the data to the master login table, subscriber login table, etc. So this way you can restrict the data. What happens for deletions? So someone might ask you that if a deletion happens, will a new entry get created? Yes, a new entry will get created in the master login table, which will get copied to subscriber login table and eventually to ODQs. And the change mode and entity counter for those will be D minus one, which signifies deletions. Well, while we are, uh, you know, um, discussing the uh, Delta fields, I think it will be a good refresher. If we quickly go through what is the, uh, what are the values? What are the possible values for ODQ change mode and entity counter? By the way, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that zero record mode was previously being used, which was usually mapped um, to RO cancel uh, field coming from the data source. But since CDS views will not have RO cancel uh, anymore, so SAP has given two new fields in instead, ODQ change mode and ODQ entity counter. And there are different values which translates to the record mode values. Like for example, if you have U1, which this is an after image, if you have U minus one, before image c1 new image d minus one reverse image so all these value combinations of change mode and entity counter will translate into record mode which we are well familiar with 
and that's how SAP has given these two delta capturing or delta identifying fields in the CDS view. The possible values for ODQ change mode is C, U, D. C is for new record, U is for updates, D is for deletion. An entity counter will have values like 0, 1 and minus 1. And with combination of CUD with 1, 0 and minus 1, there are different record modes created. So this is how uh, the CDS view will identify delta and it will map um, to the zero record mode. So please don't forget to map these two fields to zero record mode in your transformation technical group. In the transformation, you have two groups, right? One, the, one is the main group and one is the technical group. And in the technical group, you have to map the ODQ change mode and entity counter to zero record mode with the new formula or the new uh, type of transformation rule, rule type, which is called calculate zero record mode for ODP. There is a new rule type in the transformation. So use that and map the source fields uh, change mode entity counter to zero record mode and you will have all the deletions, updates and everything captured successfully in your PW ADSO. All right, guys. So this brings us to the end of this session. I hope you like this session and I hope this gave you the behind the scenes workings of SAP CDC. Uh, you don't have to do anything special to activate SAP CDC. All you need to make sure is you have those minimum versions in your source and target and just create a CDS view with that CDC annotation I showed you and you are good to go. All right. So thank you for listening to this patiently. I know it was a long session, but thank you so much for your attention and I hope you will benefit from this. All right. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next session.